President Trump used his State of the Union address to spearhead a law in Congress aimed at ensuring foreign aid only goes to Friends of America. The law takes a dig at U.S. aid recipients who voted to rebuke his decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. But one world leader, Yoweri Museveni, the president of Uganda, says he loves Donald Trump for telling Africans like it is. But in the book, Another Fine Mess, America, Uganda, and the War on Terror, our guest Helen Epstein argues Museveni loves America for fueling his corrupt government for decades. With us now, we have Helen Epstein, the author of that book. Epstein is a biochemist who lived and worked in Uganda, where she helped yeah. develop uh, a vaccine to fight AIDS. She's also a professor at Bard College. And Lawrence Chiwanukwak in Sareko is a Ugandan journalist. He teaches at Dutchess County Community College. Welcome to you both. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Helen, if I can begin with you, how much Western money goes into Uganda on, a, on an annual basis? Well, we really don't know. We know it's hundreds of millions, probably about a billion a year if you combine all sources, including the World Bank, uh, the U.S. government, and also European governments as well and other uh, agencies. Have you, um, Lawrence, if I can ask you, um, what have you seen over the course of the last decades in Uganda with that amount of, of aid, uh, one would think that there would be um, there would be a lot of development, there would be a lot of progress. Is that what you're seeing in Uganda? No, you don't see that. You don't get to see that on the ground. On the paper, the money comes, but it ends up in the high echelons of those in power, and they amass it as they wish. So basically, we're talking about corruption. In what ways is that money spent that doesn't directly benefit the people, Helen? Well, we see um, um, H hundreds of millions of dollars uh, intended for road projects, for HIV AIDS projects, for malaria projects, for children's vaccines have ended up really in the coffers of politicians linked to the ruling party who are uh, use the money to entrench their grip on power. Uh, we suspect, we don't know, but we suspect a lot of it ends up going into the security forces also to, uh, for the forces of repression. Your book makes the argument that there basically has been a multi-American administration compact mm -hmm. with uh, Museveni that over the years has, as you have both said, has funded him, um, but has also uh, basically done, in, to a certain extent, America's bidding across the African continent. In what ways have you seen that? Well, it seems as though uh, very early on, it seemed that the Museveni was very close to the Reagan administration, beginning in the late 1980s, when the United States became, began to worry about Islamic terrorism, particularly in Sudan, which is Uganda's neighbor, uh, which was then, especially in the early 90s, beginning to play host to Islamic Jihad groups and Osama bin Laden, for example, who were interested in... Um, toppling Mubarak in Egypt and undoing the peace deal with Israel that we wanted very much to preserve. Uh, and so um, the United States at a certain point in the early 1990s began funneling weapons uh, through Uganda to um, southern Sudanese rebels to fight the Sudan government and um, weaken it. And at the same time, though many of these weapons were coming from the United States, and they were also diverted, some of them, to rebels who invaded Rwanda and began the civil war there that culminated in the genocide three years later. Um, the uh, weapons also uh, later appear to have gone into Congo to destabilize that country. Mm. And so um, uh, I, I think many people are aware that Central Africa, the Great Lakes region and the Horn was a real mess in the 90s and continues to be. Uh, but we, um, few people really know the Museveni's kind of role in, in orchestrating quite a bit of that chaos and America's support for him. Lawrence, can I ask, what is the impact of all of this on the people of, uh, on the people of Uganda? Obviously, there is a, a refugee crisis in the, in the region where there are many, uh, many, displa many displaced from South Sudan who have come into, um, into Uganda. What is the impact of all of that on the, on the people of Uganda? Well, the impact of, of that is that the, there is a situation r right now 
which is going to be about resources. One of the main issues being land that seven on the international community is playing a good host, quote and unquote. Uganda's won international praise for its reception for, for, and its, for, for its reception of, of refugees. Yeah, but uh, if you look at that reception, the people are actually, they've been welcoming from as far as I can remember growing up, we grew up with the people from Rwanda, people who had come from places that had had conflicts. But today, there is almost a systematic way that people are coming into the country and they are being settled. And you have to really study seven and they figure out his role in these wars, and then the refugees run away, come into Uganda, and he receives foreign do dollars, and it's his companies, for instance, his Minister of Foreign Affairs, runs the company that does all the handling at the, interna the single international airport. So all the refugee food that is shipped by the World Food Program, name it, is, they are making money off of this. Mm. And it's really sad that the UN is being taken for a ride. Helen, we remember the bloody dictatorship of Idi Amin, um, which was a, a horrible period in Ugandan history. Mm. You have said that, in your view, Museveni is even worse than Idi Amin. Yeah. At the outside, we, um, there have been estimates that you, um, Idi Amin killed 300,000 people. I've never seen an accurate accounting of that, but certainly tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people died under his reign. Uh, but he ruled only for eight years. Museveni's been there for 32 years. Mm. And if you include all the mayhem that he's been involved with in the region, uh, we c if we count sort of the war in northern Uganda, for example, untold, thousands upon thousands of people died there. If we consider uh, Rwanda, nearly a million people died there. Um, Congo, millions more then w really the, the death toll begins to end up and, and um, Idi Amin begins to look good by comparison. Thank yeah, you very much right. to Lawrence and Helen. Thank you for joining us. Next, the latest numbers on the flu paint a grim picture. You're watching Arise America.